Hi everyone, welcome to Autodesk Simulation TV, Simulation in Action. My name is Matt Jaworski and I'm a technical specialist here at Autodesk. Today I'm going to be discussing simulation mold flow, in particular gas assisted injection molding. So let's go ahead and get started. In this exercise, we're going to look at performing a gas assist analysis on the plastic handle part that you see on the screen. Our key learning objectives are to first define what is gas-assisted injection molding. Then we're going to break into the software and take a look at how to set up a gas-assist injection molding simulation. Then finally, we're going to run the results and then review them to see what interesting plots it gives us so that we can try to design one of these parts before they're built and get rid of a lot of risk. So what is gas-assist injection molding? Well, it's an injection molding process that's a variant of the normal injection molding. An inert gas, typically nitrogen, is introduced under pressure into the polymer melt stream. The gas is introduced either through the nozzle or a section in the mold, typically called a gas pin, or even in the runner system itself. The parts nearly are completely filled, typically 80%, sometimes 50%, depending on how much gas you want to um, have inside of the part before the gas is injected. Then the gas is turned on. There's typically a delay time involved so that uh, you build up a nice frozen layer. So you don't get issues like blow through um, in, the, in the plastic part itself. And the gas is really used to pack out the part. So this inert gas, this nitrogen, is injected inside and from the inside it packs out the part as it's trying to shrink and, and cool. And you can make the packing more uniform inside of the part with this process because you're not um, injecting plastic into one area. You can have several gas pins that uh, can distribute that pressure to give you a more even packing pressure to compensate for shrinkage. So the injection molding steps that happen with gas assist is the polymer is injected. Again, typically that uh, certain percentage, not all the way filled. Then the gas is injected under a pressure into the polymer itself. And the gas inside of the stream displaces the molten polymer in the, in the core of the material into the, the sections that are not filled. And that gas pressure is maintained all the way through to the cooling phase. Then the gas pressure is released either through the pin or sometimes there, there's another section of the part that will penetrate the part uh, to let the gas out. And finally, the part is ejected, and we have a hollow part. So here we are in the Insight software. I've already preloaded a model and meshed it, but um, in other previous episodes, you'll be able to see how to go through that process. But in, in order to save a little bit of time, the setup is exactly the same as what you do for any injection molding uh, process. You'd import a part and mesh it. In this case, I meshed it as a dual domain. And the reason why I did that was to show you some of the options that uh, you have for converting it to a 3D model. So we have a dual domain model. We've checked the mesh statistics on this model. We didn't have any issues. It's ready to be converted for a 3D mesh. So during that process, what we can do is go in and take a look at how we're going to mesh this. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this model by right clicking and selecting duplicate give it a name, and then go ahead and open it. So I'm just going to double click on it to do that. So we have a version of this model and we want to convert it to 3D. The easiest way to do that is to just right click on the existing dual domain mesh and set the mesh type to 3D. So now we have essentially a skin mesh or dual domain mesh on the outside of the part and we want to mesh through the thickness of the model. Now there's some important considerations when meshing with 3D. So let's take a look at those. First of all, there needs to be a minimum of 10 layers through the thickness. Now this is something that we can set up in the mesh properties and we'll go ahead and do that in the demonstration following this. By default, the mesh uses an even layer distribution throughout the thickness so that um, every layer through the thickness is the same. We can set up node biasing so that we can get more elements either towards the outside skin or the inside center of the model itself. So as you see in, uh, in the diagram down here, this is no mesh biasing whatsoever, very even distribution through the thickness of the model. 
And then we have uh, a 0.5 value of node biasing where we get more elements in the center of the mesh itself. And that's great for gas assist because that will give us more accurate predictions of uh, the gas flow length because we have more mesh in the area of where uh, everything is happening. And then we can also bias it the opposite direction. If we give it a value of two, there'll be more elements um, at the skin and that would be useful for something like um, predicting shear imbalances, for instance. So let's take a look at the model back in the program. So we're back in the, in the uh, Insight software. We've converted to 3D mesh, and now we want to go ahead and mesh the model. So if I go in and do the meshing process, we have some options that we can set. Now the first thing is we can go under Tetra. And remember I said that we should use at least 10 layers through the thickness. And right now the default is six. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that to 10 layers. And we can also go through and click on the tab for Tetra Advancement. And this is where we can set up bias ratios. By default, there's going to be an even distribution with no biasing. But we can set up a bias of uh, 0.5 so that we get more elements in the center stream of the model so that we get more accurate predictions on the, uh, the gas channel, its flow length, and what happens in the, in the center. So by having more elements there, we get more accurate predictions. So we're going to definitely go ahead and do that and then mesh the model. Now we have a meshed model. The next thing we have to do is tell the program that we want to do a gas assist analysis. So I'm going to go up and change it from thermoplastics injection molding down to what we really need, which is gas assisted injection molding process. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And when I do that, it does change my study tasks uh, section here so that in addition to an injection location, we have to set a gas entrance points. And these are going to be where you have your gas pins or if we had a runner system, we can have it inject into the, uh, the runner system itself or through the nozzle or barrel of the machine. In this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select some injection locations and rather than build a runner system, we'll just uh, put some injection location or locations on the side of the model. So this should be good. This is going to be where the polymer comes in. And then we have to determine how we want to uh, hollow out or put the gas pin where we want to hollow out the inside of this handle itself. So probably the best way or easiest way of doing that would be to look at it from uh, the bottom view or the back view and have a, a gas entrance point inside of the model in probably this location here. So when I select the gas entrance, it's going to ask me what do you want to do in terms of properties. So I can set up a new property or simply edit the existing one, the default one that's there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we have uh, the ability to select multiple controllers. So we can have different gas pins with different configurations. In this case, I'm just going to use one though. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that uh, condition. It has right now a gas delay time of 0.1 seconds. And this is after we've done our, uh, our switch over. How long do you want to wait? Um, a lot of times there'll be a delay because you want to build up a frozen layer so that you don't have an issue like blow through where the gas will penetrate beyond the, uh, the melt flow front and blow through that melt flow front so that you don't have a nice hollow channel. It's leading the channel, which we don't want. And there are other issues like, for instance, fingering where we don't keep the, um, the gas in the channel. So it will go into thin sections of the part rather than stay in uh, gas channel areas where we design the gas to be. So I'm just going to set a very low delay because we have a fairly thick part here. It shouldn't need much to set up. So in the controller, I'm going to set the injection control from automatic to specified. And we have a couple different options to specify. So I'm going to use a, a, a pressure control process rather than a volume control process. And now I'll go in and edit the controller settings. Now we have to pick our own settings because we didn't use an automatic. So I'm going to start off with, um, after the delay at zero seconds, I'm going to try um, 800 PSI to start off with. And you can taper this if you want to. And then I'm going to have it for three seconds apply that 800 PSI gas pressure and see how much of a, a penetration that does. And if I have to add more gas or maybe uh, increase the delay time because it's a balance between having 
uh, a thinner cross section if you have more delay, or putting in more pressure so that it uh, penetrates in terms of a flow length uh, greater. So we'll go ahead and use those, hit OK, set our controller up, hit OK a third time, and now I have the ability to go in and use that, um, that controller. So I can select areas of where I want to put the gas locations. So as I look at this model, I'm just going to adjust where that gas location is so that it's in the middle of the, of the cross section itself. Then I'll go ahead and, uh, and apply that so that we have our gas inlet point. Finally, what we need to do is go in and set up some process settings. So based on the material that I've already selected, it has its own default mold surface temperature, melt temperature. I've chosen an injection time of three seconds for this model. And I'm going to set up a VP switchover. Now automatic will probably be very late in the process. So what I'm going to do is do it by a specific volume setting. And I'm going to use 50%. We're going to assume we're going to fill half of the polymer and then half of it with gas. And then finally, we can set up our own packing controls if we want to, but really we're packing out with the gas process itself. So we really don't need to add uh, much, if anything, to that. So I'm just gonna set up a very, very small profile of, uh, of having it switch over and then just apply 80% of the maximum fill pressure for a second. Again, we can make this uh, very minimal because we're gonna pack out with gas. I'll select OK, and now we're ready to run the analysis. So we can go in and start the analysis itself. Now the analysis is complete. So let's take a look at the results. The primary um, results that we want to take a look at is first fill time to see if the part completely filled. If we get uh, issues with blow through, you'll see that um, a section will be you know, very strange looking, and we'll look at that in one of the, uh, the other exercises. What we're looking for here is the part not filled. We see here that the part is completely filled, so that looks very, very good. We can go in and look at the results and animate them and see how we filled to about that 50% range, and then all of a sudden the gas kicked in and filled out the rest of the part. If we go in and we look at some of the primary um, plots for gas assist, what we see is first a gas time, so it shows us over time how the gas penetrated. And if we look at it from the side, we didn't do too bad. We, uh, we got it most of the way through the handle and we can animate that to see how it looks as the gas penetrates through the center of the part and even get an idea of what the, uh, the thickness of this is. So we can take a look at, uh, for instance, the gas core and um, look at the model. So how thick is this section here? We can take cross sections through, even do some measurement if we want to. So it didn't quite go as far as I wanted it to. I wanted it to go down to the bottom of the handle so that this whole section is hollow. So I need to make some adjustments. So I can go in and right click and duplicate and try some new process conditions. So let's go in and try maybe increasing the pressure to maybe 14, 1500 PSI, and see if that will uh, make up for, you know, the 800 PSI got us to here. Let's try to get some more pressure in to see if that will help out. So in this model, I went ahead and ran an analysis and I adjusted the properties of the model. So the gas delay time is exactly the same. So we increased the pressure to 1450 PSI. And what we see with those results are that the gas time is different than it was before. And we see kind of a break and then a lot of gas at the end. And that's a real good indication that we had a blow through situation, which is what we don't want. The gas has extended beyond the flow front and filled out the rest of the cavity with gas, prohibiting the polymer from filling out uh, the part itself. So we essentially have what's called a short shot. And if we look at the fill time result, we'll see that happening. You know, it only filled so much, 
before it prohibited it from filling any further. So that's a problem. We had too much gas pressure um, and it blew through the flow front and caused an issue. So that's good information for us. So let's go in and make another adjustment. Let's make it um, so that we switch over maybe a little bit later, maybe 60% to see if that um, affects the analysis results. And really what we're trying to do is dial in what's the best conditions before we get to the press and do this um, in a very manual or sequential fashion. So I ran results on another model. And in this case, we went in and adjusted the properties so that the delay time was the same. The pressures were now up to 1500. And I also adjusted in the process settings the switchover. So if I look at the process settings, I have the same injection time, but I switched over at 56% rather than the 50% that we had before. So let's take a look at the results. If we look at our initial fill time to make sure, again, we don't have any of that blow through issue that we had before, we see that the part filled. We don't have any areas that are short shots or non-filled. And if we go ahead and take a look at our gas time plots, we see that that increase in pressure really um, gave us an interesting gas channel that went all the way through to the other side. In fact, it may have been too much because I'm starting to get very, very close to uh, the hole. So for instance, if somebody's pulling on this handle and there's no um, cross section through here or enough structural integrity, we may have an issue. So you can see how you can make adjustments and see how the results react and then do a lot of these what if scenarios up front because it's going to you know, cost a lot of plastic time to do this, a lot of time on the person doing this on a machine um, when you're in production to get the process set up. So this will really dial it in so that we can go in with a very you know, nice process that's been analyzed and we know what's going to happen before we, we get into doing the, uh, the trial runs themselves. So again, looking at the gas core result, we see that uh, you know, we've accomplished hollowing out the entire core. And we're pretty confident that we're you know, extremely close. We may dial it in a little bit more. But you know, very good information for us when we're designing a, uh, a gas assist part. So I hope you found today's episode um, intriguing, especially if you do gas assist. Doing a lot of those what if scenarios up front is really going to help you out uh, down the road when you're going into production. My name is Matt Jaworski. Thank you for your time.